record. Um, when we release the blame or the projection to find cause for what is happening to us, you know, we get so caught up in the why as uh, a way to make us feel worthy and validated that, you know, oh, there's got to be a reason that this happened to me. It can't be me, right? <laughs> Welcome to the Modern Sage Podcast. I'm Leah Guy, your host, and as always, I'm very happy that you are here. We have a very special episode today with a fellow healer who I'm anxious to speak to and introduce you to, but before I do, just let me remind you of a few things. These podcasts, you can watch them on YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash Leah Guy. You can also find our promos on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and that would be following Leah Guy Live on any of those channels, as well as my business page on Facebook. So if you want to stay in the loop of who's who's next up on the podcast or other events, retreats, workshops, and more, please follow me there. Also, just as a, a reminder to help us out with the algorithm and just continue to spread the news, inspiration about the podcast, please leave a review or share it with your friends on social media or however you like to share. It really does help. And I love getting new listeners and introducing our fabulous guests and all the work that, that we share here with new people. This is a place that you can come to be inspired and informed about how to live a life that you love. So without further ado, let me introduce you to today's guest. His name is Charles Clay. And he is many things, as I said, he is a fellow healer. Um, he's gone through a, a tremendous experience himself and his own self-healing work, uh, much as I have and so many of us have. He's an author as well. He's an inner peace coach. And I'm just going to introduce him and welcome him onto the show. We have a lot to cover and talk about today, and we're just going to see where this flows. I have some things in particular, Charles, that I want to discuss with you today, but welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm glad that you're here. So uh, tell me a little bit about the healing work that you do first off, because my listeners are very engaged in the healing components of our work. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you can relate. We we go through these initiations and learn the lessons and blessings. And I uh, learned a lot of those initiations the hard way uh, in order to teach an easier way. And uh, that's been refined into an inner peace process that um, is the simplest way I've found to releasing subconscious beliefs, um, you know, negative patterns that we pick up, and even generational wounds that have been passed down, mm. abandonment wound, mother wound, father wound for generations. And um, it's just a beautiful process for going to the source of where love, support, and safety is needed within us, and and uh, how to come back into alignment with our highest and greatest selves. And it's been a blessing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you mentioned something really interesting uh, to make it easier for people, and I applaud that. And I also want to say that I think you will probably agree that what we've been through and and what people go through are our greatest teachers, you know, and they are here, I believe for a reason, I wouldn't change my history for anything, but when we're healing as healers and as just everyone on their healing journey, I think it's important to recognize how we can not, we, that we don't have to stay attached to the story that has created or has been the impetus for our healing. And that's so often what happens. I'm sure, uh, you know, your clients and people you see on social media, you know, we see the continual talk about um, survivors and narcissists and, you know, the inner child and so forth. And, and I know that we need to get the information out there. And so I'm grateful for it. And to embody the, the space of, uh, of, being he healing, you know, <laughs> instead of the victim or the person that um, identifies with that. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, it's we see we see this often. You know, people fall into I can't believe this is happening to me. Um, you know, why did that person do this to me? And zooming out. You know, when we're in it and in the emotional states of all that, it's, um, you know, much different than when some time passes, you 
you get a greater awareness and get to see it from a different lens um, and a different perspective and begin connecting the dots as to how, you know, these people that did these so-called terrible things to us or the events that happened that were so devastating um, all lead to some really profound lessons, blessings, gifts that can be revealed, uh, greater understanding of self. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, that brings more meaning to life. And then we connect the dots looking back as to how all that happened for us. Yeah, it really is beautiful when we can do the looking back piece. You know, if we could all just remember that within moments, not even days or months or years, within moments, we can look back and witness and be the observer of what we've been through and what we've experienced. And that's really great. And seeing that evidence of that, when you think about, you know, some of your greatest challenges and how that's led to developing who you are today and your skills and, and gifts that you get to share, then it's easier to look at new challenges that you're presented with, with a new lens too, because you can choose, uh Oh, this is going to be the, the worst ever. And if you set your reticular activation, your lens to that, then the universe is providing you with evidence of it being the worst thing ever. Whereas if you were like, wow, this is a really potent, and powerful challenge i'm in yes. there must be some incredible lessons and blessings through this and gifts that want to reveal themselves and show me that and you turn your lens to that then it's theirs allows for a little more ease and grace and and um you know universe universe will provide you with those yeah i love that i often think you know when the bad stuff happens <laughs> and sometimes i'll admit you know I, I send a prayer up and say please take it easy today you know? <laughs> Give me a little break today. Um, right. But when, when you're going through it, you know, just that simple reminder of this is for me, you know, this is for me and what is, what is in here for me? Um, we don't have to like it, but we can release the resistance to it with that focal point, as you're saying, the perspective that, you know, often does attach us to a state of victimness. Um, and, you know, we are all victims in a sense, and we're all survivors in a sense. And, bigger than that, we're all just beings that are moving through life with a lot of different things happening, you know, and that's, that's it. So tell me what is your favorite kind of work to do with a person? I'm so I'm talking one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So, you know, it depends on the type of clients. I work with a lot of visionaries, leaders um, worldwide now, and um, it's it's such a pleasure and an honor. I get some people that come to me with physical pain, and um, we get to you know uh, help them discover uh, how that's happening for them and and how to accelerate healing. And um, others come to me because they're um, not happy in their relationships. You know, there's just coming back to the same type of conflict and arguments over and over, and they're ready to you know resolve that finally uh within themselves and um it's a beautiful journey it's you know it's it's all about discovering more about ourselves mm -hmm. and then we get to show up in a new way that that's um you know serves us and others and upgrade our communication um so in that journey um it often involves my inner peace process which is you know going to the source of where a lot of these stories develop from the first place you know, there's a really common denominator. A lot of people have a, a unworthiness, you know, story running and a, um, you know, I'm not good enough. Um, you know, it's not, it's not for me, like these things, or I'm not uh, worthy of love. And these, like recognizing where the source of these stories were developed and that, that it was decided by us. These were decisions that we made about ourselves at usually a very young age. Mm -hmm. And so getting to go back and support that version of ourselves um, through this process is really beautiful because it allows for any emotions that weren't fully processed then to be felt and healed and, and released. And that's that can be super liberating. I mean, the feeling after you get a good cry, right, it's like lightness and clarity and and new level of focus and and so allowing our bodies to finally metabolize energy that's been trapped from some of these events or things that have happened mm -hmm. in the past then we can see more clearly oh that's where i made this decision about myself because my parents were 
divorced and I'm not good enough to keep uh, the, the woman I love around, right? And these type of stories that develop at such a young age that we don't even know are running in our subconscious. All yeah. we know is that we keep running into self-sabotaging behaviors that um, get very frustrating and um, can lead to turmoil in our relationships and, and uh, leave us feeling stuck and often. So mm -hmm. it's amazing how fast we can move through these um, with the right tools. And what I love about the process is that um, once I guide people through it, then I give them a take-home version of it. So now you literally have a step-by-step -step process that can empower people that are dealing with small things, addictions, right? Like, oh, I want to, you know, things aren't working out in my relationship, so I want to just go numb it out, what I'm feeling, go grab a beer or go stuff it with something in the fridge or go on Instagram and a scroll hole and get caught looking for dopamine there, right? Or you can go through this step-by-step -step process and resolve it from the source. And yeah. Super empowering. And, and um, so it's a, a great tool to have in the Batman utility belt. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about today. Um, we've talked on the show a lot about addiction and I wrote a book about overcoming our toxic emotions and the addiction patterns that we have to our imprints and so forth. But just curious from your, from your standpoint and your work, when a person is struggling with releasing a grip or attachment to drinking or smoking or eating or whatever it is, can you give us a little insight into your process, how it can become, I know that you have an easy process as you just shared, but more specifically how a person might be able to work with their own cravings and that very strong feeling of, I can't move forward without this thing. Right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have a lot of clients that I've worked with that were smokers, right. And knew that they didn't like that about themselves. And so it was this self-sabotaging pattern that they were ready to give up and, um, and, you know, substitute it with something better. And so one, again, going to the source of that and gaining some, shedding some light on, you know, why this is even something that you're called to consistently. And in that example, you know, as we know, lungs, right? And Chinese medicine is associated with grief. And so oftentimes um, smokers have some unprocessed grief that um, from loss earlier in life or a time when we don't, we weren't taught this in school, <laughs> how to, how to process these emotions in a healthy way. And so, um, you know, a lot of people are still dealing with unresolved grief and yeah. that energy can be super low vibration. It can detour us from our, you know, greatest path. You could be feeling your highest self and fully aligned and, at rocking and rolling in your purpose and all of a sudden you know life throws you a couple curveballs and it's like go without even thinking about it resorting back to that mm -hmm. habit that's self-sabotaging and mm -hmm. so by going into the grief and um, through this process it's allowing their bodies to finally metabolize this energy allow the tears to fall or the howls to happen whatever needs whatever giving your body full permission to to release in a way that um, allows for that energy to move through you then uh, something really beautiful happens you know there's like so much more clarity after that and um, you can begin to see the lessons mm -hmm. the blessings as to how this is happening for you and then watch as the magnetism towards that substance begins to lessen mm -hmm. and it's and when we have a good strategy in place to create healthy rewards and rewire the brain in a way that um, can make it easier to resolve these addictions and um, choose better you know breath is an amazing tool right under our nose the whole time to help us slow things down so I offer some really powerful tools in that realm that, that helps you, gives you time to bring more awareness to what's happening and that space of, oh, I'm actually choosing this instead of just the Labrador brain kicking in and yeah. going for the sweets or the smokes or whatever. And that alone, that pause, and then having a list of healthy celebrations of 
healthy rewards, you know, and I categorize them for people. And, um, you know, one of the categories is more relaxive, restorative, um, healthy rewards, you know, mm-hmm. it might be massages or, uh, an Epsom salt bath. And, you know, on the other end, you got the active things. These are the things that activate your natural feel good hormones and, you know, all those endorphins, all that, the serotonin, dopamine, the oxytocin, you can, you already have that within you mm-hmm. and we can access it with the things that bring us joy, the, the activities that are nostalgic for you. You know, mm-hmm. like for me, it's hopping on my mountain bike and go for a ride. And, and that alone just feels like freedom for me because yeah. it's wind through my hair. It's nostalgia of when I was a five-year-old and created a biker gang in our new little town with a bunch of friends. And that feeling evokes those same hormones and neurotransmitters that I'm trying to seek from the external substance. Mm -hmm. And so you become self sourcing and you get good at this and it rewires your brain to where you don't have the same need and the same um, magnetism towards the substance. And then eventually it's like, man, you can look at like cigarettes or, you know, chew or whatever the, the addiction was and, and kind of be grossed out by, yeah. hey, I can't believe I did that for that long by resolving the deeper underlying issues at hand. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Mm-hmm. I, when I've gone through um, releasing addictive patterns, I think that w- one of the most um, profound changes that I've noticed was the ability to stay so present that the presence was almost overwhelming that in itself is like a high, you know, um, and you just get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. And, and even, and I, I love all the suggestions that you made and I wouldn't argue with any of them. Um, I remember at a certain point, I think it was with coffee um, and, and I'm not saying coffee's bad, you know, I'm not judging anything anybody does because, you know, we're, we're humans. Um, but I had to give up coffee. There you go right there. I had to give it up. And I remember the, the craving. So became so strong that I allowed the craving itself to become the high in the moment and just connect with the good feeling of that funky ass feeling that I didn't really like, you know, and then ride that as the, as the process was unfolding in and of itself. I don't know if that makes sense, but (laughs) it totally makes sense because you're choosing to see it through a different lens of the observer of who even wants this. And then you can slow things down and enjoy the desire of desire. Yeah. Yeah. So it totally makes sense to me. And, you know, I remember, uh, you know, we just got back from Hawaii. I remember a previous trip to Hawaii. Uh, this is a great example of, you know, lessons and blessings from, from pain. But, you know, our second day there, we're kind of bringing the, the go, go, go from Austin where we live and that into the big island, which is super, you know, Chill. Low, yeah. like, island vibes, the mana. And so I was getting these messages, you know, from the, from the island to slow the F down. There's important, um, you know, it's important to be present and receive some, some messages while you're here. And so I was in such go mode and had so many things to do yeah. that I was still drinking coffee and doing all the things that we're at this beautiful space and having the best day. And then I step on a man of war and these are really painful jellyfish. Right. And ironically, it was just one spot on my foot and it was my right foot and it was right on the, you know, our hands and our feet are maps, right. Right. For reflexology charts, even our faces. And it was right on the adrenal spot. Mm, mm. And so it was highlighting my adrenals that could use some support and some red. And I was like, okay, I get it. Thank you. Yeah. And I cut out the caffeine, I cut out the, um, you know, stimulants and, and allowed for more meditation and relaxation. And that allowed my foot to heal really fast once yeah. I received those lessons. And, um, and then we had, you know, an amazing uh, pinnacle party where I got to dance. I was kind of worried about like, oh, we're having this, you know, wedding party. Am I going to? 
be able to move around. And, yeah. and it was funny. I was looking around. There was four other people that had foot injuries. Wow. <laughs> that, Interesting. That wedding party. So we all had a, a good chat about that. I'm like, Hey, what have you learned? What have you learned? Yeah. And, um, and so seeing things in that way, you yeah. know, even pain, something that's, you know, it's like a, pain to me is a, a check engine light. Just mm -hmm. like your car, we're pretty diligent about getting that serviced as soon as we get a check engine light. But for even a greater technology, these human bodies, we oftentimes, you know, are taught to just take a pill or numb it out or, right. you know, but pain stands for pay attention inward now. And it's an important message from our body to allow us to uh, make some shifts and some changes so that we don't have a major breakdown. Yeah. And so, I always appreciate um, taking the time to slow down and um, I, I appreciated that island medicine. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, uh, well, for various reasons, the slowing down thing is probably one of my greatest challenges. Um, and it is also the thing that I seek and use the most in my in my personal work. And, you know, I live in or I, I lived in Manhattan area for 16, 18 years. And now I live in a small town, kind of similar to what you're saying. But when I would go anywhere from the city, it was just, I was like a, a rat in a grocery store, just zoom, 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 and getting frustrated and getting impatient and getting angry. And, you know, all that energy that really just serves as a distraction for us, you know? And it's so interesting when we step back and pause or just slow down and, and meditate or just take in the moment to notice how much we distract ourselves with any kind of busyness, even if you don't live in Manhattan or Austin or a city vibe, you know, the distraction uh, away from self. And then we can bring that closer to home and look at the distraction from our heart and our emotional state. You know, our mind is doing the same thing to us. The mind is like the city, you know, it's just full of information and busyness and things to do. And I think if anyone is struggling right now with where to start with their healing practice it's you know can we just kind of downshift a little bit you know um and i like you i constantly pay attention to you know how the body talks to us and and me and and how i can reply in a thoughtful way so that i get the medicine that i really need versus you know just patching something up yeah. um yeah, it's interesting. So I'm curious, I always like to ask personal questions on the podcast because, you know, people can read about you and learn about you and all of your, your information will be in our show notes, but as a healer and as a person who's gone through a lot in their lives, which I hope you share with us in just a moment, um, some of that, um, I'm curious what still triggers you because it is my belief that, you know, this is a lifelong journey here and we all have our um, vulnerabilities in that way, if you will. So what, what triggers you these days? Yeah, it's a great question. I find that now I'm more intrigued when I'm triggered instead of like a, uh, reactive you know, de defensive dukes up, come up real quick. And, and mm -hmm. then it becomes a battle of who's right and who's wrong. Um, one of the things that that triggers me is um, just lack of compassion, just uh, opposite of kindness. Mm -hmm. You know, when people uh, speak to others in a condescending or you know on a hierarchy from a pedestal, mm -hmm. uh, that's challenging for me to observe without stepping in <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and uh, evening the the battlefield you know and yeah. um and so it ironically i don't experience a lot of that any as much anymore mm -hmm. um, but you know i think it's always great to share some of the past and how that this type of inner work shifts a reality in a big way so going back to charles 1.0 i was very easily triggered and was uh had some unresolved anger um, from actually dating back to when my mom passed early on and that I hadn't processed. And mm -hmm. so that I didn't even know I was holding, but it would 
uh, result in this very, it, it would show up in really interesting ways. This is going back to like high school when I would go to parties and be having a blast. Life of the party, you know, dancing, having fun. But every so often there would be not just one usually, but a group of guys that would come start some stuff with me. And back then I had a lot of pride. So, you know, there was a lot of words exchanged and I wouldn't usually back down. And so it led to, you know, taking the first punch, giving the last nine or 10, and then getting the heck out of Dodge before the cops show up and started to recognize that this was a pattern early on in my life. And I was like, why is this happening? You know, I, I'm not going to a party looking for a fight, but these guys seem to find me that are. And of course, you know, over time, recognizing after doing this work, like, wow, yeah, alcohol brings the, up the, the deeper layers of that what's unresolved and anyone else that's harboring anger. It's like law of attraction. Right. Um, and then sparks fly. And so recognizing that, bringing awareness to that and then developing some uh, a better relationship with my anger actually was mm. a, a game changer for me. You know, first I got into like boxing and and um, and channeling that into constructive ways through workouts and mm. and actually giving myself permission to break some stuff. Yeah, there were there were you know a younger part of me who wanted to destroy something. You know, yeah. and so giving even just boxes and stuff, getting to just stomp and smash and. Um, give my body permission to do that um, allowed for this release um, over time. And it was, it felt like a very constructive way of channeling this energy. And then I could look at this energy through a different lens and realize, wow, this anger is actually a really powerful energy that allows us to create boundaries. It's mm -hmm. like showing us where we're no, no longer willing to tolerate certain things in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it can be, uh, a very fierce energy that that I like knowing that I have that if need be you know to protect my family or anything I know I can access that and channel it like Bruce Lee into what's needed and that that allows for a great deal of inner peace knowing yeah. that that is there if I need it and um, since I resolved that for myself nobody has ever messed with me <laughs> like it, it's yeah. like no, it's just not even in the field, you know? Yeah. It's really, so it, it's just a, an important example of, you know, where I was to my reality now. And because I lead with kindness, because I choose a lens of unconditional love, but had I not resolved that, there mm -hmm. would still be those incidences showing up. Until yeah. That was resolved. And that's how we're all mirrors for one another. Right. Yeah. You know, I love that story and it's a really great analogy and, and also just the, the visual and the analogy of the pain of heartbreak that you experience from losing your mom, just, you know, needing to come. I mean, why wouldn't it want to come out in the most aggressive, profound way? Um, because at that time, you know, you, you weren't able to, to process it and manage it. So I appreciate you sharing that. That's a great that's a great story. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, especially guys. Um, when my, my mom suffered from depression, alcoholism, and you know, it just got to be too much for her and she took her own life when I was 10. Mm. And so I remember sitting at her funeral next to my brother and trying so hard not to cry. Yeah. Because I had picked up these beliefs from other guy, older guys I was hanging out with that, you know. Boys don't cry. Yeah. You, that, that's a sign of weakness. Can't show weakness. And these silly beliefs I picked up that just became issues in my tissues and mm -hmm. were literally like over time, I was just like super fit, but wondering why I was always so tight and had all these like you know, pains and reoccurring injuries, in my neck and all these things that kept showing up. And I would try all the scientific, you know, methods and ways to resolve that. But of course, it's like losing your keys. It's the last place you look at the emotional aspect. And mm -hmm. that's given me um, a huge lens at which to help a lot of people with addressing the emotional aspect with pain is oftentimes it's interwoven in there and there are some emotions to move and resolve as well as the metaphysical aspect right. uh, 
pain and messages from the body um, are thoughts that create um, that manifest as illness or disease in our body and so and then as well as the physiological aspects that we address so it's been um, you know looking back those have all been very powerful lessons of blessings to help um, others on their path too so I appreciate it all yeah I hear you every time I go through something I this past year I've been dealing with shingles recurringly and so mm-hmm. you know initially there's the the physical stuff and the, did you have the chicken pox and have you been around uh, some, you know, overly vaccinated people? If that shedding business is real, you know, you go through the, the logical kind of things until you find your, you know, find my way into working with the emotional entanglement, you know, around the nerve tissue and my second chakra. And, and I think that that kind of being your own investigator for lack of better word, um, when we, release the blame or the projection to find cause for what is happening to us. You know, I think one of the the biggest things that, that we can eliminate is asking the question, why, you know, we get so caught up in the why as uh, a way to make us feel worthy and validated that, you know, Oh, there's gotta be a reason that this happened to me. It can't be me. Right. <laughs> yeah. And look at a point the finger, whose fault is this? Yeah, 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 exactly. Where we're giving the power away. (laughs) Yeah. And so turning that why into, you know, how, how, and how is this feeling in me? How is this connecting into me? How is this processing within me? It's, um, it's a game changer. I, you know, the perspective alone, I think if someone were to, you know, ask the, the huge question of how does healing begin or happen, no doubt one of the answers has to be just awareness. You know, the awareness has to be one of the answers. I'm sure there's more, sure. but yeah. First yeah. Awareness for sure. Yeah. I, I think just to piggyback on that, you know, self inquiry um, can help you gain those lessons and blessings in an accelerated fashion, instead of choosing the victim. Why is this happening to me? Yeah. Longing the experience of suffering can ask three really powerful questions and the the quality of questions that we ask can greatly enhance the quality of our life. So when you're dealing with challenges, when you're experiencing shingles or, um, you know, these, these challenging episodes, um, just ask, you know, how is this happening for me? Mm-hmm. And what are the lessons in it for me to gain? And what needs to change? Yeah. And, and those even if you don't get the answers right off the bat, you're at least setting your reticular activation system, your radar system on to finding, it's like a guided missile, finding those answers. And you watch as they'll synchronistically start coming to you in one way or another, especially as you slow down more um, to receive that. And, yeah. and you can have these really powerful aha moments and then watch as if you honor that and honor those changes that need to be made. Sometimes they're just micro changes how fast your body could heal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, it's so, it's so true. Yeah, it's it's interesting even with that and with my example um which you know is is um there's many other physical issues that are uh, more well it doesn't matter if they're more or not but um the first time the first round you know I didn't know what it was and so it was so painful and it kind of lingered and I was it was doing the why and the let me fix this somehow, right? Uh, because you get into kind of a, a state of being. And then when it happened again, it almost came and went without even noticing, you know, and similarly each time, but um, but that information is still there. And I think for people who have recurrent or chronic physical issues or emotional issues or mental issues where maybe there's, it's easier to handle we still have to look at the questions that you offered, fabulous questions, and and being inquisitive and curious about, you know, the depth that this is attached to within me, right. you know, and that can really take us far. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I had an experience yesterday, no, it was about two or three days ago, uh, driving, you know, Manhattan driving. I actually love driving around the city, but... I wasn't in the city, but it reminded me of when I was in the city and a similar story to yours of how I used to get so 
so pissed off, you know, the, the crazy drivers. But a few days ago when it happened, you know, there was, I, I noticed it. I'm not going to lie. You know, I didn't, I didn't get pissed, but I noticed, oh, here's that, here's that thing again that's happening. <laughs> and the thing is, is when, when everyone's following the traffic laws and then someone's trying to quote, be nice and they break the traffic laws to let someone else do something that screws up, screws up the flow. Right. And that person, I know that they're trying to quote, be nice you know, for a variety of reasons, but the injustice that I feel for everyone else, it's not just for me. It's for all the people behind me. It's for people that are stopped up there. It's for the accident that almost happened. It's so nonsensical. It's the injustice and the ignorance. And so a few days ago, this is a trigger, obviously. So a few days ago when this happened, I was able to observe it and recognize, oh, there's that initial feeling. Like I, 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 I used to get out of my car and you know teach people how to drive <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> so I didn't do that, and I didn't get mad. I didn't get you know overly pissed. I was just like, wow, there it is. And then it allowed me, in the similar way, to to go within and 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 observe my own feelings of justice and. Um, and fairness and and yeah you know, accountability for all things and for other systems at large you know just and and when i really sat with that for a while i realized this is a really important piece of my work you know and that's why it's so personal to me when i when i would get triggered right um and what can that teach us so i think that these this inquisitive curiosity about ourselves is helpful in any any aspect of our life whatever uh, right relationships i was enjoying watching with you know visualizing you getting out of your car and teaching people <laughs> the justice <I> did. <laughs> <laughs> and you know in that way actually uh yesterday regarding the shingles one of my realizations was i can't fix everybody i can't help every wounded bird i can't identify as the wounded healer forever and and congregate amongst those people you know I have to shift my thinking about a lot of that, right? And I can't get out of my car and tell everyone how to drive, right. <laughs> even right. if they're being an asshole or mean or, you know, ignorant or just spaced out or whatever. That's not my job, right? So, yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm surprised I'm not, you know, I haven't been murdered by now. <laughs> <laughs> right. With, uh, yeah, Manhattan, especially him. Yeah, um, Jersey City. Ugh. Yeah, it's. It's fascinating now looking back um, at things that used to trigger me and people that really knew how to push my buttons mm -hmm. and like, poke, you know, those sore spots in me. And now recognizing like everything that I've learned since then, like in the moment, it's like, this is like the enemy, right? Or like the, you know, it could piss you off so much, but, but looking back after connecting the dots, recognizing, wow. These are some of the greatest teachers. Yes. The ones that could trigger us. And, uh, you know, oftentimes it's family, right? Yeah. It's the, you know, they oh. say, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your family. Right, <laughs> and, right. Uh, <laughs> and so they know how to push those buttons. Or if you are in a growth phase and you are, you know, showing up in new ways and um, diving in on your purpose and creating new things in the world, that might rattle some cages of their perspective of the persona that you are yeah make them uncomfortable to then like start pushing those buttons right so it's really interesting um you know looking at that as slowing that down i use a four eight expansion breath four seconds in eight seconds out you can do this in conversation mm -hmm. and recognize and even come to a place like wow i'm fascinated that this person was able to trigger me like there's something to get to look at here it's like yeah triggers are the gateways to a, a deeper self-discovery and yeah. there's always gold to discover there yeah about ourselves. so yeah absolutely like discover the broader perspective of yeah how there's injustices in the world and then where is that showing up in your life and where did that begin for you that you know what's right what's wrong and um, there's so much to discover there. And, you know, 
know thyself. Yes. It comes back to, you know, discovering more about ourselves. And so we can thank those that are yeah. able to trigger us. And I know it's so true. I, I've always said fear is our greatest teacher, but I think that fear and triggers are our greatest teachers, you know? Yeah. And, and when we try to avoid them, we're missing out on, um, on the teachings. Yeah. Right. You know? And they'll just keep showing up. Right. <laughs> That's the thing is that you will notice it'll keep showing up in your reality, different characters maybe, or situations, but the same triggers will keep getting poked and prodded over and over again until we decide to go to the source and, and gain those lessons and blessings and discover how it's happening for us. I That's some of the things I had to learn the hard way. Um, and now it's just looking back, I can giggle at myself because, you know, appreciate that, um, you know, at least, at least gain, gaining that lesson. So now I can take a look at it mm -hmm. and I get figured instead of, you know, wiping it under the carpet for later. Yeah. And it's like, right. you're, you're just, you're like, okay, more of this, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And you know, it's when you're, you're saying about looking at yourself and giggling, I love that because the, you know, there's a, an epidemic of, of judgment and we're just so incredibly hard on ourselves you know, so incredibly hard on ourselves. And, and I try to, in, in the space of compassion and grace, um, not just for myself, but that I feel I've received abundantly uh, just for my humanness, try to always remember that, uh, no, that wasn't my proudest moment or wow, look what I did, but I was, I was doing the best I could right at the time. Yep. And and I believe that about you. And I believe that about most all of us that with, with what we were dealing with inside and in our environment, our situations and the beliefs about who we are and how life is, we're doing the best we can, you know? And so when we look back, or even if it was just yesterday, we don't, the judger just stands in the way of the connection to, to self and to our our, our power and our love and our compassion. So I, I just want to encourage all, all of us. And that's why I like to ask personal questions on this show, because Absolutely. it's very easy for, you know, for us just to, here's how you do this. And here's how you do this. And you need to do this. And have you tried this? And let me show you that. Uh, <laughs> but the, the reality is, is, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. I think you, I think you hit it on the head. A lot of people can relate to this um, just immense self-critic. Yeah, you know, the, the self judger of our mistakes, and then that leads to guilt and shame, mm. and that leads to heavy emotions that lead to these addictive behaviors. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so you can begin looking at this cycle and and zoom out from it. And one of the processes that I offer is um, a fun exercise where you get to name that voice mm -hmm. and actually get to know these parts of these voices in our head, these inner roommates that come online. Mm -hmm. You can imagine it as like your higher self is driving, like the RV with your whole family. Right. And your family is all these different characters that we've created. Um, they're bits of our ego, of our psyche that come online and try to like detour the, the mm -hmm. route, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, no, we gotta stop here. So you might have like the, the old drunk uncle that's kind of, um, you know, getting obnoxious and the whole family is like, Hey, he's getting out of line. Like, let's just boat him off the Island and you pull over and you kick him out and wish him the best. And then you keep going. That's what we try to do with these voices that we don't like in our head. These parts of us, we're like, try to exile them. Mm -hmm. But what happens? They just come back even louder and more forceful. And it's like your drunk uncle Biff. Now we have to go turn around because he got arrested for being drunk in public and we got to bail him out of jail and then we got more problems right so instead it's like getting to know these parts and addressing three things one uh, have fun with it gamify it so create a name and two a character for mm -hmm. the, these voices like it can be cartoon it can be you know my first one when i first started doing this was pac-man yeah. And he was my like Frank the Tank over consumer. He just like, oh, go out for one drink. No, let's, you know, it ends up being five, you know, like mm -hmm. more and then a big dinner and then dessert and all the things. And I wake up 
feeling like crap dealing with the consequences the next day, looking at this voice that I then hate and try to exile him. But once I named him as Pac-Man, I see this silly character that just wants to, you know, consume, consume. But then the third one is understanding that part of our psyche. It's their purpose. Yes. And this is where it becomes easy to have more compassion for these parts of us is recognizing, wow, well, this Pac-Man character, this voice in my head really just wants to make sure I'm enjoying all the best flavors and, and things in life, right? The juiciness of life. And so I can appreciate that. And then this internal dialogue I can have with him when I, now I recognize him, I'm aware when he comes online and wants to detour, you know, and, and, and I can have a little inner dialogue and recognize and honor him for, mm-hmm. I appreciate you always making sure we're not missing out on all the good stuff. And what if we were just to enjoy one drink, like it's our last drink ever and mm-hmm. like a food connoisseur, you know, enjoying the textures, the flavors. And, and so that part of me is appeased. He's happy to take the back seat now because we're up leveling our pleasure. And now my higher self is driving again instead of bouncing off these huge extremes. Right. And then of course come full circle with what we were talking about. You know, I have an inner judge dread, you know, he's like the, the Sylvester Stallone character. He's like, I am the law. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's just quick to judge people. You know, this is before I chose the lens of compassion and, and uh, unconditional love. I was quick to um, judge others. And then I'd recognize where I had a program where I was judging myself. Every yeah. time I looked in the mirror, I would, this would just come online. It was like this scan for looking for flaws. Mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, my hair's messed up. Oh, uh Oh, I'm getting a, a white hair here. You know, I'm getting mm-hmm. old. And then just like, if I identify with those thoughts, it's a spiral of negativity. Yeah. So instead it's like, I recognize, Oh, judge dread is take, wants to take the wheel. Well, he is biologically, been ingrained for generations all the way back to you know like medieval days cavemen it's like back then you had to know really quick if you could trust someone if you if they were friend or foe that meant your life or death right? yeah so like this is hardwired to this these judgments and so recognizing that and and honoring that then it's i i can have these internal dialogues with judge dread and that know his purpose you know, right. he's to keep us protected, right, mm-hmm. and safe. Mm-hmm. And so I can appreciate that. Now I have compassion for this character. I know when he's trying to take the wheel, I can have that inner dialogue. And now my higher self is driving more often. And I can even laugh when I recognize, right. oh, Judge yeah. Dredd's been driving here for a while. I'm like starting to get in the gossip mode here. Right. And and so, and I and have a good laugh about that mm-hmm. and, and have that inner dialogue. And it's a game changer. This is, is like a great it, those are those for those people that are really heady and spend a time a lot of time up here this is a great gateway to understanding more of your psyche and these parts that come online that are creating these self-sabotaging behaviors and they're just programs that have been uploaded a long time ago and they keep running it's like outdated software that we can upgrade you know like windows 2007 that needs some updates and and by doing this, you'll recognize how much easier it is for your higher self to be driving more often and notice and have a giggle when you get to know these parts. Uh, yeah. When they come online. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I, I've named mine too. The one I shared with, with you is the hall monitor. That's, Ooh. that's my, and she's, you know, she's right. likable, but nobody really likes her. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It reminds me of shadow. Work. Huh? What's her purpose? Well, you know, in in the small way, her purpose is to is to judge, kind of like your judge dread. But in a, in a bigger way, her purpose is to really help keep things in line so that everyone, you know, has a good experience and and feels good and safe and and able to fulfill kind of thing. So, you know, she's got she's got a good quality about her, <laughs> but but the the snarkiness, huh? try to keep people safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It reminds yeah. me of shadow work what you're sharing and and or parts work, IFS work. Um but I, I love I love your idea of naming them and having fun with them because 
it diffuses the energy immediately when we do that. And it's a, it's a good way. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Gamify it. And, um, any other characters you've noticed? <laughs> Let's see. Online? Well, the other ones I, I just kind of, you know, I don't have, I need to come up with more creative names, like, you know, the bitchy one, uh, I need a creative mm -hmm. name for her. Um, so I'll work on that with your suggestions. So I'll get to work on that. Yeah. Have fun with it. It's yeah. uh, you can gamify it. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us the name of your book. Yeah. So um, it's funny, quick story on that. My, uh, I never considered myself as a great writer. Um, and I found myself in Sweden in um, many, about a decade ago, uh, visiting a friend that I had met in the States. And he was like, had so much fun. I brought him into our crew and he became a close friend. And he went back to Sweden and was like, we stayed in contact. He said, my family is so grateful that you took me in. Like, they want you to come visit. I was like, cool. Can I bring my brother? And he's like, of course. So we had the best trip in Sweden. Like first introduction there, it was like his family took us in. We got the full meal deal. It was midsummer there. So, mm. I mean, they know how to celebrate and they just live so heart open, heart centered. And, and so we're playing games, we're singing, we're eating the best food and they have, um, you know, really cool hikes were going on. And I, I remember we were looking at this waterfall, eating this um, gazpacho and this gluten-free uh, quiche that his mom had made for our picnic. And we just got done jumping off the cliffs into this ice cold water and laying out on this bedrock in the sun. And it was this pinnacle moment in my life where I just took it all in and felt the same energy that creates planets flowing to and through me. And it was so much joy that I couldn't contain it in one body. It was like my a connection to my higher self saying, hey, you get to share this. Like, this isn't something you can just contain, you know, and share these experiences. And so I took that to heart and declared right then that I would get it published that year and share some of this vacation vibration that I was experiencing, you know, and how to incorporate that back into our everyday lives and into our business. Because, you know, the electricity, even when you book a trip to Hawaii or, you know, the Maldives or just anywhere that you say yes to your soul's craving of novelty, new experiences, and you hit enter on booking it, there's this electricity, then you show up on vacation and you're showing, you're seeing your higher self, you're diving into the cultures, you're starting conversations with people you might not normally and, and getting to know um, these parts of you on those vacations. So it was fascinating to me and I wanted to be able to incorporate that into my daily life. I was like, well, I've proven that this is possible. How can I incorporate this into my business too? And so um, I declared that moment that I would get published. And of course, right after that, all those voices came online. And it was like, Judge Dredd, you're a terrible writer. Who's yeah. going to read this? You know, um, and then even like, you know, how would you get it published? All these things. And I just sat and observed all the thoughts and let them go by like waves. It came back to just staying open to all possibilities. And we not even two weeks after I got home from that trip, a friend I hadn't um, talked to in a while connected me, put, put my name out there, and I was reached by Tyler Wagner. He's the um, author and owner of Authors United and invited me to uh, join in his book project, and we got to create the Better Business book. And this was combining, um, you know, 100 lessons and blessings from different entrepreneurs into one book instead of mm -hmm. having to have hundreds of books that you got to read through all the pages to get to the good stuff this is jam-packed with lessons and blessings and of course you know I like looked up and was like thank you that's amazing I, I this just fell on my plate and so holding that vision releasing the fears the doubts just letting all those waves go by and and holding that vision strong allowed for the opportunities, the puzzle pieces to fall into place. 
to allow it to be really easeful and fun. And of course, you know, I wrote a chapter called vacation vibration and, and how to incorporate that into our daily lives. And so that's where a lot of my uh, gamifying, um, you know, the mundane has mm -hmm. been such a game changer and allows us to really enjoy the fruit of this life while we're here. Yeah, that's great. That's a great story. So just so I'm clear, what is the name of the book? Yeah, it's called The Better Business Book. And there's been, it was a top seller, Amazon, Kindle, and there's been um, other iterations since then. Oh, so nice. Ours is the, the original Red uh, Better Business Book. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. What a it's great fun. story. Yeah. I remember when I first set out on, on my book, um, same same thing. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a quote writer and... It's it's a, a, a little bit of torture for me, actually, to write. You know, it's not a, a easy thing until I start doing it, but mentally and the, you know, the whole process prior to starting to do it. And I remember, I think I had this reading one time with this woman and she said, you know, you have three or four or five books in you. And I'm like, what? You know, I don't even that's not even in the in, in my head, you know, how would that even happen? And then all of a sudden, you know, the first one went out and then another publisher contacted me. And then I had an idea for the third. And, you know, it, it comes to, um, well, the manifestation process of just stepping into what is already there, really, you know, yeah. when we can trust ourselves to do that and and be open to receiving the signs yeah. and the the hand that says, come, here we go. Yeah, following yeah. following the, the group gluten-free breadcrumbs that the universe leaves you, yeah. you know, all the doors that open for you, that, that you just follow your highest joy and excitement and, and yeah. um, see where that leads you. And it's, yeah, it's, it's been a game changer. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a lifestyle. It's a way of living, choosing a lens of, you know, even going to the same um, cafe that you've been to a million times, but choosing a different lens, mm -hmm. um, choosing an intention before you go in. I did this at the DMV, the closest place to hell. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally could have gone in there and just succumbed to the zombie energy of that place. Or instead, while I was in my car about to go in, I set the intention, turned my reticular activation on to, I'm going to have as much fun and share as many laughs and smiles as I can while I'm in the closest place to hell. Why not? And went in, did a meditation, uh, started up some great conversations with a gentleman next to me that had a knee brace on. I asked him about that. I said, have you been kicking too much butt or what happened? You know, and he said, uh, yeah, ACL injury. And he was kind of bummed about it. I was like, have you ever tried meditation for healing? He's like, no. It's like, yeah, I could show you the same meditation I use to help heal my back if you like. He's like, cool. So I shared that. That sparked another conversation and, you know, doing some yoga poses in there. And uh, and then the girl calls me up that works there. They're, they're usually a lot of fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I go, you called my number. You have no idea how long I've been waiting. She's like, really? It's like, yeah. And I showed her my watch and it just says now on it. Uh -huh. watch I had it yeah, time. I have one of those too. And uh she laughed. She said, girls, come see this. You know, my husband has so many watches. He doesn't have that one yet. So it was like, it was like a domino effect. Just watching as like mm -hmm. eight different people I got to share laughs with in this closest place to hell and had a really fun experience there simply by setting an intention and incorporating this vacation vibration into building like that. I recommend it for hospitals you know, and um, yeah. whenever you're going into meetings, it's you can visioneer what your ideal case scenario would be and allow yourself to feel that before you go in and you're increasing the chances of that happening. And you yeah. get to laugh at all the signs and synchronicities that show up. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that story. And a good reminder, gosh, you know, yeah, we already, we get it. Boring, right? Yeah, we already it's get boring, set up. Like, like for what you don't want. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so many times we just get it set up of this is what it's going to be like when I go into the grocery store or into the supermarket or into the DMV or into the, wherever we have to go. And, and there we have it. So yeah. that's a great reminder. Thank you. Well, Charles, thank you so much for being on the show. Tell us, even though it will be in the show notes, how can people find you? Yeah. Charlesclay.coach. That's my website. Tons of info there. And there's a free gift for everyone there. If you scroll to the bottom and subscribe to my newsletter, 
you'll get a free gift. It's a guided alignment activation. It is a game changer for reclaiming full sovereignty. It's a movement, breath work, meditation practice that I use uh, for over decades now. Anytime I feel off or my energy is low, um, you can use this to reignite that. Use it for a good morning ritual. Happy to share that. And um, same on those of you that are on Instagram. I love to connect, so shoot me a DM if any of this resonates with you. It's charlesclay.coach on Instagram as well. And, um, yeah, those are the easiest places to find me. And uh, I always love to connect and dive deeper with um, anything that resonates. So That's great. Well, thanks so much for your wisdom, for your time, and your heart and sharing and the help that you're giving to so many people. So thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. And for all of our listeners, thank you so much for listening. Um, remember, you can follow me on social media at Leah Guy Live and also workshops, courses, and more available on my website, leahguy.com. And we will see you next week on the Modern Sage podcast. 